my friends. Here we are at the Desert Valley Auto Parts down in Casa Grande or Casa Grande, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Decided to bring the Legend down today, put a few miles on her, 579 and counting. So let's pop in here, see if anything's changed. It's been about a year since I came to this specific location. We'll see what's cooking on the inside. And there's a hearse to start things off right here in the exterior parking lot with some funeral flags. Huge thanks to Nick at the front gate. I just met him and uh, it was kind of funny. He says, you're the YouTube guy. So for better or for worse, I guess I'm known out here now. Anyway, I got instructions on um, a little side lot back here where they do sort of um, inventory control before things go to their final destination in the main lot. So this is gonna be, um, from what I heard him say, more of like a, like a grab bag, like there'll be a, a wider variety of years and makes and models as opposed to um, an orderly fashion. So let's see what we find. Wow, yeah, he wasn't kidding. Uh, I'm pretty sure the last time I peeked in here, it's been about a year since I came out here, but the last time um, this gate was open and there was nothing to be seen. So this is awesome. F body firebird. All right. So there's a little bit of rhyme or reason here because I see primarily um, Ford light duty pickup trucks here and some Nissan, stu Nissan stuff over on the left side here. Some of these, check this out. That thing has still got keys in it. Last registered 2005. Let's see if it's open. Oh man, we got lots of paperwork in here. Is there a date on any of this stuff? That is a date from 1994. Holy crap. 26,000 showing on it. Could be 126, we don't know. But yeah, um, definitely seen some weather. But the thing about these cars, and I was just talking to Nick about it, is these Arizona cars are really, really solid. bug in here. I think that would be uh, an AMC Pacer, except this one is just a AMC Pack. an old uh, Wagoneer. You can see the trim tag here in place. What year would that be? Somebody decode that for me. Guessing it's an 82 because I see 82 penciled in there. This is cool. Oh, caddy. That is one heavy beast. Not much left of the interior, though.
I don't know if any of you guys follow um, Vice Grip Garage, become one of my favorite channels and Derek on there is just fun to watch, but he loves taking a car, kind of something like this, that it's got a complete motor and just totally bringing it back from the dead. This looks like it's even got air in the tires. Might be a good candidate for a Vice Grip Garage feature. cars here there's a handful of MGB Roadsters this one looks like a Corvair right a whole bunch of Corvair stuff that one last registered the year I was born 1981 yes I'll be 40 in a couple weeks Check this out. It looks to have been a pickup truck conversion out of what used to be um, a two-door Cadillac, perhaps? Registered 1977, but this was uh, definitely a DIY creation. Very cool to look at. Once again, I'm fighting a little bit of wind noise here, so I do apologize. But uh, if you've followed my channel for a long time, I actually test drove one of these for a friend once. It's a Chevy Citation, uh, I think X-Body. Somebody can correct me on that, but a little smaller than your traditional um, A-Body, like this Celebrity and stuff. That one's pretty straight. Registered in 2001. Hey, hold on a sec. There's a familiar brand. Now this car, I'm guessing, doesn't have a lot of Arizona history because it's pretty rotted right here. In fact, I just barely touched that and my finger went through it. Although it does have what appears to be a pretty period correct Scottsdale Honda plate frame. And it is a stick. Oops, apologize for that. She's a little rough, but the odometer shows 10,000. The old push button radio. Wow, Cavalier station wagon. My friend Spencer would get a kick out of this. Probably aren't a whole lot of those still around. Oh, and a Celica, 1980 maybe? My dad had one of these back in the day. Nice little Jeep here. This looks like it could have been a mail delivery rig or something. And um, I was just talking about these Grand Ams the other day with a friend. That is the fuel injected two door. Cool, funky looking uh, rectangular steering wheel. Well, look at the Look at the RPM, look at the tack, how it goes. Come on, focus. It's a cool looking tack. And is it a, yep, digital dash. Very, very 80s Pontiac. Ooh, do you see what I see over here? Prelude. This is a pre, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess 85 on this, 85, 86. Let's see how close I got. Oh, 
automatic. We've got a power cable wrapped around this so the door doesn't open. But yeah, December of 85 build date. So it probably is an 86. Another little Celica lift back. This is cool. Period correct decal treatment down here on the rocker panel. That's kind of a cool dash too. Minus the uh, wear and tear up here, of course. So yeah, I am pretty pressed so far with all the variety here. Um, like I said, it's been a year since I came to this location and quite a bit has changed. I asked Nick and he said uh, the Cadillac inventory has seen some turnover. There's a cool looking dash in that Oldsmobile. Huge interior, especially when there's nothing in it. Hard top. And what have we here? My friend Dane would get a kick out of this. That's a Imperial. Let's take a peek inside. No parts, it says, but look at that roof. Oh, we're locked out. Well, partially locked out. Come with me, if we dare. Oh, jeez. All right. Welcome to the back seat of an Imperial. What I dig about this, check out the treatment with the controls, how they're kind of set up flanking the instrument cluster up there. We've got a 120 mile an hour speedometer, a little switch up here for floor air, and then an aftermarket gauge down here for coolant temp. Very, very luxurious, I'm sure, for its time. This car is very comfortable. Look at that switch for power windows. Oh, there we go. Little row of late model um, Thunderbirds and Cougars over there. And then this is all, I guess, Eldorado stuff. Bunch of two-door Cadillacs. I think a lot of times um, he was saying the inventory comes from private collections so they'll have somebody with upwards of even a few hundred cars that they want to um, send to classic car heaven and this is where they wind up. There's a chain link fence here separating what looks to be a separate lot. And I don't know if that's even part of the same facility here, but there's still plenty for us to see over here. Let's go get up close and personal with this Bonneville. dash treatment. Steering wheel is missing and I don't know if those were intended to be cup holders or what. But they probably wouldn't hold a heck of a lot. There's a big mama right there. Check out the grill treatment on this thing. That is uh, fun to look at, maybe not so fun to clean. Can you imagine getting in there with a sponge or a microfiber rag?
El Camino with the camper shell on it. And uh, only in Arizona do you see a Buick Riviera with tumbleweed fragments stuck in the wire hubcaps. That one's got a tow hitch on it. Cool little SUV looking rig over here. Look how long the gear shift lever is on that. I haven't even scratched the surface here. I'm barely making the perimeter still. The Mercury Meteor. That's kind of jammed up. This is a cool body style. Riviera. I have some friends in Palm Springs with one of these. There's the quite the sandwich if I've ever seen one. An old Pontiac Sunbird sitting on top of a Crown Victoria. That car is kind of cool. This would be prime, prime um, Radwood material for that show I just went to last weekend. Okay, we're in business here. I see a couple more old Hondas. Albuquerque Honda cars on the plate frame there. That one has an aftermarket sunroof for sure. And there's even some paperwork. Let's go see the other side. Check out those floor mats. Still have the embossed pattern there. Okay, we have a vehicle ID. Oh, what? It has an in-glove compartment cassette player. That is cool. <clears throat> All right, what do we have here? A notepad. Insurance information, probably. I'll put this back where it goes like to leave this stuff kind of as I found it. Very cool old car though. What does that say? Harry's Honda Cars. I wonder if anybody can tell me where that is. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is a 1998 RL doing in here? I only know that because those are 1998 specific wheels. Yep, and it's a little rough. Definitely not something I expected to see out here today. This is uh, way more heavy on the domestic vintage stuff than uh, Japanese, but fun to see some Stuff I can relate to sprinkled in, like this Miata. I see a roof lane there of something I can identify. That's a 300ZX. And if I remember correctly, the gas door being behind the rear wheel means it's a 2 plus 2, so it actually has a back seat. 3000 GT. Those are very cool. Okay, now we're into 1980s Ford Taurus community here. I've had a few people ask about Corvettes. There's usually not a ton just because I think these cars are way more sought after, so they kind of get picked over before they make their way to a place like this, but this has got some 
usable stuff on it. So it looks like this second lot does interconnect and I just made my way into a completely separate bank of cars. It is just endless back here. 57 Ford coming at me right here. There's a pretty cool lineup, old um, Pontiac sheet metal. And a half of one here. Let's take her for a spin, yeah? All right, let's go. Pretty complete, awesome uh, center console here. And we've got gauges for clock, voltage, fuel level, and a Super Pro 8000 RPM tack. Oh, additional gauges down here. Look at the grab handle for that. Grand Prix. It's fun to see some of these cars with original um, California tags like this blue and yellow variant here. Another Chrysler. I do love the tails on that thing. Kind of wrap around the upper portion of the fender there. Speaking of tail fins, that one will do some damage. We are heavy into Cadillac turf now. here compact complete glass and frame we have a comfort control air conditioning here in this Cadillac power windows door was already open but it's pretty stuck My friend Greg will appreciate that, Camaro. That's a Z28, a 91, I guess. Cool wing on the back of it. Once again, a very prime Radwood candidate. Looks like an aftermarket um, stereo because there's a remote control for it there. Wow, <clears throat> everywhere I turn, there's another hidden lot and I just keep making my way through the rounds here. That is a very serious looking Caprice Classic with some custom treatment. How about that Thunderbird right there? Not too bad. Very nice looking body. Looks like we might have some headliner droopage. That's a cool door handle too basically just a button with a little integrated the handle is part of the molding I've never seen that Wow let's talk about this thing okay so maybe started out as a Camaro right because I see the signature sort of profile, but what in the world? That's gotta be one of the funkiest creations I've ever seen in any junkyard ever. Holy crap. And it says atomic. It almost has like a back to the future DeLorean vibe to it. Dang, that is a, uh... That is one of one, my friends. You won't find 
another one of these babies on the road anywhere. Wow, it almost is just a little, a little bit much to take in. We put vertically stacked headlamps. That might even be out of an Accord. Yeah, they're both Accord headlights from different generations. That's crazy. I love people who are innovative. Saw one of these at Radwood last week and it was a manual. I about died when I saw event coverage later and it was a stick. That one is not. Wow, Buick Riata over there. You guys, my life is now complete. I've seen a Yugo. Oh my gosh. Okay, is that factory? Got a little air intake here. What is the deal with this thing? I know they get a bad rap and probably for good reason, but I hate to say it, that thing is kind of in good shape <laughs> for being in here. Wow. All right, well. It's official. We have seen just about the widest variety of stuff you could possibly feast your eyes on in here. There we go. This is the uh, Cadillac Alante. If I remember correctly, these have a pretty cool digital dash setup. Let's see if we can get inside of it. No such luck. Another Riata over there. At one time, could have been yours for 2,500 bucks. There we go, 98 KUPD, Arizona's Real Rock. I know that station. This car has not been registered for 30 years, 1991. Pick a Tornado, any Tornado. What kind of uh, function do you think this was serving? Homemade something or other. I missed something over here I need to come back for. I see the back end of a, a cord. Oh, that's kind of rare. The AMC Eagle four wheel drive lifted station wagon sort of thing. All right. A little cord. Let's give her a look. Let it air out for a second. It is a five speed. Wow. I haven't seen a Honda headliner do that. Power windows, power locks. This is pretty highly optioned car. Look at that where the button of the cruise control is. Way down there on the dash. Got some books down there. Shows 216,000 miles, and I believe it. Another 85, so this is uh, built in June of 85 just before that prelude we just looked at over there here's an oldsmobile 98 with some muffler issues we're dragging on the ground with both sides there great looking body on this one tinted windows but let's have a seat let's just have a seat okay wow there's a lot going on here Power antenna, defrost. Mm, I wish you could smell this. <laughs> this is like combination of dust and like musk, but 
I don't hate it. It's actually pretty cool. Push button radio, and you've got selections here for music, voice, what does that say? And bass. Air conditioning. Whoa, what in the world? How does that cruise control work? It's got like a rotary dial on it. Somebody's gotta teach me this about this old car. There's a pretty sun-baked newer Buick and my grandma had one of these back in the day. Some of you are into uh, pickup trucks. There's an old 4250 custom cab. Still got a motor in it, missing a hood. Some sort of custom setup here with the wiring. Pretty tidy cab though, considering. Oh man, I'm a big fan of what I see right here. This thing is giving me Christine vibes. What have we here? Yup. Plymouth. Oh, it's a Plymouth Savoy, S-A-V-O-Y. But Texas plates, that has got to be, what are you gonna say, 58? Oh, I love it. I need this car. I've been obsessed with Christine for way, way too long than I care to admit. I can't get in here though. Passenger side is open. This thing is cool. Still locked. Where's my door lock? Come on. I would love to take this thing home just for yard art. I mean, it is a major conversation piece. And the body is not bad. Ouch. Got a little binder clip here. Pretty simple gauge cluster. The wheel is cool. It's a neat design. Probably original upholstery here. That's cool. Definitely hasn't seen the road in a few decades, we'll say. <laughs> Part of me thinks this car is just going to fire up and repair itself and run me over here. <laughs> Wishful thinking. I'm trying to see when this thing was tagged last, but it's a little bit too worn out to read. Can't get into the trunk either. So it is in fact a 57, not a 58. It looks like it may have been here since June. And I see a Texas registration sticker from 1981. So probably not been on the road for 40 years. I think that's my favorite for the whole trip today, is this car for sure. Look at that fancy script. Just when you thought gold package barely came about in the 90s, you come across an old Chrysler New Yorker that proves otherwise. We have a, wow, look at the ventilation set up here on top of the dash. That is a fan knob, radio under the dash and some kind of drawer here hanging out. Nothing in the glove compartment today. I think that's going to do it for this trip. I will uh, say goodbye to the folks at the front desk. Hey, there's a clean two owner, 1994 Acura Legend. Um, super fun trip. Thanks you guys for coming out with me. And uh, always fun to scout this stuff out with you. Uh, if you have specific stuff you want to see, next time I come out, give me a holler. And uh, we'll catch you later.